You're welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. I call this tale Superstitious Nonsense. Spindleshank says that he's superstitious, but really he's a nut. He lives by imaginary rules that no one else can understand. I mean, he's scared of that black cat because he thinks black cats are bad luck. But they're not. <coughs> well, not for me, anyway. Araminta's life was ruled by stupid superstitions. Beware the monkey men from Mars. If you pass this gate without hopping, they will invade. <laughs> duvet left, duvet right, pat it up the middle, throw it over any dog and then you'll need a piddle. Every morning, she shook hands with the postman so her letters would all contain good news. And if she had hiccups, she had to kiss a bearded policeman. Silly little things were blown out of all proportion. But we've been saving for this holiday for seven years. Yes, Daddy, but I can't get on that bus. Why not, dear? It's a lovely bus. It's number 70 minus 10, 3. Araminta couldn't say the word 6. 5 plus 1 is my unlucky number. I'll have a word, said Mr Gaslamp, and he got the driver to change the number. <laughs> now we can go on holiday. Oh, no, not now. Didn't you know, if you raise your voice in the first 90 minutes of the only holiday you've had in seven years, you'll be eaten by sharks? Nobody gets eaten by sharks in Birmingham. There's always a first time. And who raised their voice? You did, just now. Mind the cracks! Don't want to be mauled by bears, do we? It was just an ordinary day. Mr Gaslamp was pulling up an alder tree when Araminta skipped into the garden, reciting the alphabet backwards to keep her dress clean and licking worms to stop her skin from wrinkling. <gasps> Daddy, no! <coughs> you have to say sorry. But her cry came too late. What have I done now? An alder is a witch's tree. If you don't apologise when you pull it up, death and destruction will fall upon the house of Gaslamp. We're all going to die. Calm down, it's only a bit of wood. But Araminta was convinced that her father had deliberately jinxed her. From that moment on, she wanted nothing more to do with her thoughtless parents. To be granted a divorce from your parents, you must prove that you are an adult. To be an adult, you must 1. Leave school 2. Travel the world 3. Have money That night, Araminta started to make up superstitions in order to get what she wanted. I can't do homework anymore, she lied. Haven't you heard the saying, don't do homework or a vampire bat will suck out all your blood? Oh, how perfectly horrible. It gets worse. Don't go to school while teachers are there or they'll send you mad. Says who? Oh, says everyone. So I shan't be going anymore. I'm going to travel the world instead. But we can't afford it. You're not coming. I shall pay for my trip with my pocket money. But you only get a pound a week. Did, to quote the famous words of St. Denisus Menesus, if parents don't increase their child's pocket money, 
by a lot, men with big sticks will beat them up. Mr and Mrs Gaslamp gave Araminta all the money they had in the bank and she went off round the world. And a very nice time she had too. But when she came back, she needed somewhere to live. In Peru, she said, there's an old Inca superstition. If parents do not give their house to their daughter before she is 12, the evil screaming will descend and she will scream until she is sick. But where would we go? The garage. It's got a car in it. Good, because you know what they say, live in a car and you'll go far. Are you cold, dear? I can't feel my legs. I'll get some firewood tomorrow. Never give firewood to a stranger, or they will come back for more. But I'm your mother. Then, Araminta luck ran out. It was Friday the 13th. Araminta was in such a fluster when she rushed out to buy auspicious seaweed and blessed pig's trotters to ward off bad luck that she didn't notice the salt. As she hopped to the shops, she thought she heard a police siren, but it was an ambulance, and she should have held her collar till she'd seen a dog. And when she came home, she was so busy counting keys to ward off the headless coachman that she only spotted the ladder after she'd walked underneath it. Araminta had broken the big three. Her life was in danger. She dragged a metal box into the garden, laid a ring of garlic around the outside, lit candles at the four points of the compass, sang Keep Me Safe, O Great Nan Goblin, chalked the head of a dodo on the lid of the box and ate a mouse. What are you doing? asked her father, defending myself against evil spirits. Once I'm inside that box, I shall be safe, protected by the circle of Min and the force of Fatung. And she closed the lid, feeling safe and secure from all the evil demons outside. <laughs> the fact that a cow fell out of the sky at all was an unusual event. That it should have scored a direct hit on the box was spooky. That Araminta should have been squashed to death was the final icing on the most bizarre cake ever baked. After moving back into the big house, Mr and Mrs Gaslamp put up a headstone on Araminta's grave. Here lies Araminta Jane, superstitiously insane. Fought her demons, lost the battle, went out in a storm of cattle. Hopefully she's gone for good and won't be coming back. Touch wood. <laughs> Thought you might like to know that Spindleshanks has just had a bit of good luck. The cat was sick. <laughs> Get him off.